Another happy garage. Let's have a chat. This is a um, this is a FJ40 Toyota FJ40 1974 with the Chevy 350 in it that I struggled because it was overheating, and I thought maybe it was the high flow water pump. Excuse me, I just ate. And it was driving me nuts, driving me absolutely crazy. And I'm gonna have to, like, find a good light. It's just driving me absolutely crazy because I had put AC on it. In order to put the AC on, I had to change the water pump and a couple brackets, find hoses, did a new thermostat, and I had to do the intake gaskets because they started leaking. So just a whole bunch of work just to add AC belts like again just driving me absolutely bat shit crazy and it had this overheating and it not like super overheating but getting hotter than I would really like you get up to like 230 degrees and just hang out right there at 230 and you have to deal with my shadow every now and again because this light will go off if I don't move. So, yes, 2.30, just hang out there. Usually idled fine. You idle it all day. 195 or so, 190. Not a problem. Just going down the road, won't you just heat up. And I was worried. I was like, man, don't tell me this thing's got a bad head gasket now. Or, you know, maybe the previous owner had flushed, had, had used some some uh, block seal. And I didn't know. And uh, I just emptied it out and put new coolant in it. And flushed all that sealing, sealing goodness away. But, man, that wasn't it. As it turned out, I had to reach way back into troubleshooting. You know troubleshooting? So the essential of troubleshooting, essential, is to know, consider and know that whatever your issue is, whatever the car is doing, is a symptom of a problem. It's not the problem, right? So this thing was overheating which is a symptom of the actual problem so what did the actual problem have end up being I had mentioned I'd removed the intake which involves taking out the distributor um, this engine doesn't have the timing tabs on it so so I did line it up by ear, kind of by how the car was running. It was just too far retarded. So when your timing is too far retarded, it actually puts more heat into the exhaust and raising the temperature that way. So how did I fix it? Well, I advanced the timing. And because I don't have an accurate timing light. I kind of had to go by feel, go by engine vacuum, and that did it. Advancing the timing brought my temperature down from 230 to now it'll only get up to 215, 220, which is good. It's an improvement. So, to think to further improve. I'm probably going to mess, not mess with, adjust the idle set screws in the carburetor. Yes, this is a carburetor. Going way back for that. And I'm going to do that because this doesn't smell like a 350 when it runs. Like, like you know how when an old Chevy is running, you kind of smell it in the exhaust. You know, it smells, you got that little bit of unburned fuel smell in it. As long as I can remember, a Chevy 350 always had that kind of rich, burning smell to it. Even 
in the later iterations when they were fuel injected they always just had a little bit of fuel smell to them so i'm gonna, I'm gonna rich up the idle mixture a little bit um probably loosen up that power valve just a smidge and i'm gonna call it i'm gonna do another drive tonight with the ac on and as long as that temperature doesn't exceed the 220 215 220 i'm calling it fixed it's as good as it's gonna be of course adding the ac adds a little bit of heat but that's okay 215 kind of i'm gonna accept that as a fix so there it is that's that's the update that was the fix that is uh, advice on troubleshooting for this video as always happy garaging everyone